So welcome everybody to the uh, uh, you know day two of this Majorana exploration event hosted by KTP. Um, so our first uh, speaker of the day is Felix von Open from Free University of Berlin, and he's going to tell us about uh, Viasar chains. So go ahead, Felix. Oh, uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening uh, um, to to everyone. Um, then we start by. Uh, thanking the organizers uh, for putting together this uh, uh, great workshop and for giving me the opportunity uh, to speak. Um, so we've already heard uh, yesterday that uh, atomic chains are interesting platforms for uh, um, uh, topological superconductivity and for uh, observing uh, Majoranas. Um, uh, what I want to uh, show in this talk is that uh, they are also actually very interesting uh, systems for uh, quantum magnetism and that there is an interesting interplay between uh, their quantum magnetism and uh, topological uh, superconductivity. Um, so the uh, indications for Majoranas in these systems are as usual uh, zero bias peaks that are appearing at the ends of the uh, chain. So here's the zero bias peak and that appears at this uh, end um, of the chain. Um, and these are data by uh, Ali uh, Yastani that we might have already uh, seen yesterday. And this work then uh, caused uh, a lot of follow-up uh, experiments, some of which uh, I uh, mention uh, here. Now, uh, the two crucial uh, characteristics of these uh, systems um, that are underlying this topological uh, superconductivity are, uh, first of all, um, that appears that these ad atom uh, spins seem to, li seem to like to form uh, uh, a ferromagnetic uh, order, a ferromagnetic uh, state. And secondly, uh, these ad atom chains are relatively closely spaced. Uh, so the ad atom uh, D orbitals are actually overlapping between neighboring uh, ad atoms. And then uh, this, these overlapping D orbitals basically lead to uh, bands, uh, D orbital uh, bands of these chains. And uh, these chains, uh, these, these bands will then uh, disperse and these bands are spin polarized because of the uh, ferromagnetic, ferromagnetic order. And one would then expect topological uh, superconductivity when an odd number of these bands is crossing uh, the Fermi energy uh, of uh, the substrate superconductor, because then the substrate superconductor is inducing uh, um, pairing correlations into these uh, spin polarized bands, and that is the classic system uh, for topological superconductivity and uh, Majorana um, end states. Um, now, there are also um, another limit uh, which one can uh, consider, and uh, these are example chains that were recently put together uh, by my colleague, uh, Catalina Franke, and by atomic uh, manipulation. And these are iron atoms that are on top of ni uh, niobium uh, diselenite, which is a uh, superconductor. And uh, you can basically um, put these chains together ad atom by ad atom. And uh, as you can see um, at the uh, side here, at the scale bar, uh, they are, uh, this is a five nanometer scale bar. So these ad atoms are about a nanometer uh, apart uh, from, uh, from each other. And uh, um, so in their case, uh, the d orbitals are actually not overlapping. Uh, this uh, band formation of d orbitals will not play any role uh, in this case but uh, they are still inducing a, a SHIBA or a YSR state in the substrate uh, superconductor due to the exchange interaction between the impurity spin and uh, the conduction uh, electrons. And these YSR chains or uh, YSR states are overlapping uh, between neighboring um, ad atoms. And in this way, uh, these YSR states uh, will form, uh, form bands uh, in the gap of the superconductor. Now, uh, this again has been discussed in a number of papers uh, and many others later uh, as a um, system for topological uh, superconductivity. And the basic idea in this case is that um, we now have a chain of these YSR states and they will uh, broaden into a band due to the overlap of, the, uh, of neighboring uh, YSR states. If this um, band 
with uh, the bandwidth of this band is relatively small, then there is going to be a trivial gap uh, between the positive energy uh, YSR band and the corresponding negative energy uh, YSR band. And in that case, you would not expect any uh, topological superconductivity. But if these YSR bands are dispersing more strongly, then the positive and the negative energy YSR bands can actually overlap and cross uh, zero energy. And then under suitable conditions, uh, a P-wave gap, uh, topological gap can open uh, in the system. And in particular, uh, this has been discussed for the case in which there's a classical uh, spin texture that you assume. You assume that these uh, spins are ordering and uh, form a classical uh, spin texture. And uh, if there is a ferromagnetic order and you have spin orbit coupling in the superconductor, you would be forming such a uh, um, P wave gap and have topological superconductivity. Or alternatively, if uh, the spins order into a helix, uh, then you can do without spin orbit coupling in the substrate superconductor and again have a P wave gap and uh, topological uh, superconductivity. Um, so, so far, uh, uh, so known. Um, that's uh, what has been discussed uh, so far. However, there's one aspect that one should uh, perhaps remember, in particular for these chains that can be put together ad atom uh, by ad atom. And that is that these individual uh, um, impurity spins are actually quantum uh, spins and not classical uh, spins. And that's simply uh, an experimental fact uh, for um, that is uh, shown in many experiments. First of all, of course, these ad atoms uh, under appropriate conditions uh, in appropriate cases uh, show uh, condor resonances, um, both on normal metal uh, substrates and on uh, um, superconducting uh, substrates. And uh, so here are the condor resonances on the superconducting substrates. This is also lead. Um, and uh, they also show um, spin excitations if, the, uh, if there is sufficient uh, single ion anisotropy uh, for these spins, uh, then you have different discrete uh, spin states here, say for a spin five half impurity, and the tunneling electron can then excite uh, from the ground state to an excited state, and that leads to uh, steps in the di uh, dv. So that also shows that these spins are actually quantum and not uh, classical. And that then uh, raises the question, um, um, what about the interplay of this quantum magnetism and topological superconductivity in such dilute chains of uh, magnetic ad atoms? And that's uh, what I want to address uh, in this talk. Um, so here then uh, uh, is an acknowledgement of my uh, collaborators. Um, most of the hard work in this project has been done by a very good student, uh, Jakob Steiner, um, who should also be uh, in the audience. And we've collaborated on, that, on this with uh, Christophe Morat, who is a visiting uh, professor from Paris uh, um, this year, and with my colleague, uh, Katharina Franke. And so what I will uh, do then is to uh, try to convince you that uh, these kinds of uh, quantum uh, YS or dilute quantum YSR chains are actually uh, quite um, appropriately described by an extended version of a, a TJ model. It's essentially a TJ model uh, amended um, by uh, pairing uh, correlations um, of the e electrons. And then I will discuss uh, exact diagonalization results for the uh, phase diagram. Uh, for the excitation spectra um, in these various phases. And then we will discuss uh, topological superconductivity and Majorana end states in this case. And finally, uh, I will discuss what happens in the more general case when one is not just looking at the simplest case and the most quantum case, namely spin one half uh, impurities, um, but actual transition metal uh, chains. Okay, so let me start by reminding you about uh, uh, YSR states for classical and quantum uh, impurities. So um, basically each one of these uh, um, impurities is going to be exchange coupled to the substrate uh, electrons. And um, the strength of this exchange coupling I will denote uh, by K. Um, and if you uh, assume a classical spin that is polarized in some particular 
uh, direction, then this is basically a single particle problem. And uh, you can just solve the Bogolyev of the Gen equation for this problem. And you find that each one of these impurities is inducing a pair, uh, symmetric pair of uh, subgap um, and Bogolyev of the Gen states. Uh, and as the uh, exchange coupling, which this should really be K, uh, as the exchange coupling K uh, is increasing, eventually uh, this, the YSR states cross at uh, zero energy. And this is a quantum phase transition um, at uh, weaker uh, coupling. All of the electrons are uh, paired and there is simply a, a subgap excitation. But at stronger coupling, it turns out that uh, the impurity basically binds one quasi particle and uh, so you have a transition from an even fermion parity state to an odd fermion parity uh, ground state. Um, the main difference in the quantum case is on the one hand that you have uh, uh, condo uh, renormalizations um, so that changes the uh, exchange coupling and now this transition, uh, this quantum phase transition is no longer happening um, when this Dimension this coupling, uh, dimension this exchange coupling alpha is equal to one, but rather when uh, the pairing gap becomes comparable uh, to the condo uh, temperature. Um, but more importantly, um, the quantum uh, spin degree of freedom is not frozen out uh, in this case. And uh, so for uh, in the weak uh, coupling case, in the weak uh, exchange coupling case, you still have a free impurity spin because here all of the electrons in the superconductor are paired and the spin is still uh, free to be point up um, or down. Whereas if you're in the strong, uh, in the strong exchange, strongly exchange uh, coupled case, then the uh, impurity spin um, forms a singlet uh, with uh, one of the quasi particles of the superconductor and becomes effectively screened and the remaining electrons are then in, uh, in Cooper pairs. So whereas uh, for delta larger than the condo temperature, you have a free impurity spin in the system. For delta less than the condo temperature, this impurity spin is uh, effectively screened and uh, there is uh, no local spin moment uh, left at the site of the uh, impurity. Um, now, this uh, quantum phase transition between uh, the free spin and the screen spin ground state is not just a theoretical construction. It's now routinely observed in experiment. And uh, this is a very nice uh, example uh, in which, um, which was done in the group of my colleague uh, Katharina Franke, um, in which uh, the uh, magnetic impurity was actually embedded in a molecular matrix. And then one could basically push or pull this uh, molecular matrix by the SDM tip um, up or down. And as the uh, impurity moves further uh, from, from the substrate or closer to the substrate, you're actually explicitly changing the exchange coupling uh, between the magnetic impurity and the substrate uh, electrons. And you can uh, induce the um, this quantum phase transition directly. And if you look at the excitation spectra, then you see here that they really have a cusp uh, and that's the position of the quantum phase transition. And there are also other indications in the asymmetry of the YSR peaks, uh, uh, which clearly indicate that uh, one is dealing uh, with such a quantum uh, phase transition. Okay, so um, if you look at this in the classical picture, then it seems as if the two sides of, the, um, uh, of this quantum phase transition would not be uh, very different uh, from one another. So imagine first that the YSR state, we are, we are before the quantum phase transition at weak coupling, so the YSR energy is in some sense uh, still positive. Um, and we have uh, a weak hybridization between these YSR states. Uh, then basically we have uh, two um, YSR bands that are separated by a trivial gap. Similarly, if we are in the odd fermion parity uh, ground state, then now we are binding uh, a quasi particle to each one of these uh, um, impurities. Then again, we, and, and, uh, we have two weakly dispersing bands with a trivial gap uh, in between. And it seems that these two situations are rather similar to each other. But that changes uh, dramatically when you look at these at, at quantum spins. Um, uh, so let's first look at the uh, weakly exchange coupled case. Uh, in that case, 
Um, now we are still having a single free spin at each one for each one of these uh, impurities, and these spins are now uh, talking to each other due to the RKKY interaction that is mediated by the substrate uh, electrons. So we are actually dealing with a quantum spin chain um, uh, in this case. And also, if you tunnel in, um, then you're exciting the uh, YSR state. You go from the even parity state to the, the odd parity state, odd fermion parity state for that particular impurity, which means that you're actually screening uh, that impurity. So a tunneling experiment is basically introducing a hole into this uh, spin chain. And then this hole is mobile uh, because this tunneling, this screening electron uh, can hop to neighboring sites. Now, if you're in the strong, if in the um, strongly exchanged couples uh, um, situation, then of course things are very different. Uh, now, each one of these sites actually, each one of these impurity spins binds one quasi-particle and is thereby uh, screened. So now the RKKY interaction is uh, um, inconsequential uh, because there's basically no more impurity spin sitting uh, at these uh, impurity sites. So whereas previously we had a quantum spin chain, now we have a rather um, uh, boring system with a, a single ground state uh, uh, and not much excited, and, I mean, a very boring Hilbert space, if you like, uh, at low energies uh, where all uh, spins are, um, are, are screened. If you now tunnel in, uh, then uh, what you do is you're changing from the odd parity state to the even parity state. So now the impurity spin becomes unscreened and this um, additional impurity spin, single impurity spin can move uh, through this uh, um, system. So whereas previously you had a mobile hole uh, in a spin background, now you have a mobile spin in a uh, um, spinless uh, background. Okay, so then obviously it's interesting to look at uh, the quantum magnetism of this system. And uh, uh, it actually turns out that there's rather little known about uh, these quantum cases, the, the main thing that uh, has been done is that uh, these authors have looked at what they call the Shiba molecule or the YSR uh, dimer, and uh, they did um, numerical renormalization group uh, calculations for the system and extracted this phase diagram as a function of the RKKY interaction between uh, neighboring spins and uh, or these two spins and uh, the pairing relative to the condo temperature. Um, and they also could calculate the excitation spectrum uh, for this system. Now, it's obviously not very practical to do NRG calculations uh, for an entire uh, chain. Um, so one needs to do something uh, different. And it turns out that there is a rather simple and uh, maybe even simplistic, but um, it turns out very successful approximation uh, to describe uh, these quantum sp uh, spins coupled to superconductors. And this approximation is uh, to just uh, consider a single um, orbital uh, um, for the superconductor and uh, introduce pairing correlations into this um, orbital and then to exchange couple uh, the imp an impurity spin uh, to uh, this the spin of the uh, electrons in this orbital. So that's uh, described uh, by, by this term. So we are basically just reducing, integrating out the superconductor, if you like, and reducing it to a single uh, site. Or in other words, uh, this is a, uh, an approximation that becomes reasonable if you take uh, the gap of the superconductor to become uh, very large uh, compared to all other uh, energy scales. Now, um, if we look at the even fermion parity sector of the um, electronic Hilbert space, uh, then you have two states, you have the vacuum uh, and you have the doubly occupied site. And uh, as usual, the pairing interaction will give you a linear combination as the ground state of the two with the usual um, U's and V's of uh, VCS uh, theory. And uh, um, both of these states are spinless, so neither one of them is subject uh, to, to this exchange interaction. And then uh, you basically have two states of the system, uh, two low energy states. Uh, there is the BCS pair um, multiplied by the free spin, the, the spin, the impurity spin, which can either be up or down. 
In this case, again, the energy uh, depends only on the pairing and is independent of the exchange coupling uh, because both states, oh, the state is entirely, uh, it's a spin singlet. So uh, there is no spin interaction with the, um, uh, with the impurity spin. If on the other hand, you look at the odd parity um, uh, uh, subspace, then you have uh, the two singly occupied uh, um, electronic orbitals. And uh, uh, in this case, you will not gain any energy from, from pairing, um, but uh, you can gain energy from uh, the exchange coupling. And, and, and then of course the uh, impurity spin and the electron spin uh, will, uh, will form a singlet. And uh, now the, the energy of this odd uh, fermion parity state um, depends only on the exchange coupling K and not on delta. And it's now just a question of delta uh, versus, um, versus K, whether uh, the ground state of the system is, is, has even fermion parity and a free spin or has odd fermion parity and uh, a screen spin. So these are uh, then these two states, if the YSR, the, we can now define the YSR energy in this many body situation as the difference between the odd fermion parity state energy and the even fermion parity energy. If this energy is positive, then we have a free spin. And if this energy is negative, uh, we have a, a screen spin. Now, this may seem like a very drastic uh, approximation, but actually, um, if you use this approximation to treat uh, the uh, YSR dimer, uh, then uh, and look at the phase diagram um, and compare it to the NRG calculations. Then, apart from the fact that uh, here you have the condo temperature and here you just have uh, write things in terms of the uh, exchange coupling, basically the phase diagrams look uh, qualitatively um, very similar. And also the ex excitation spectra um, of the NRG calculations and of the simple uh, model are qualitatively uh, um, uh, almost identical uh, to each other. I mean, we didn't tune here parameters. We, it's just uh, taking similar parameters to, uh, um, to do this. And these are actually calculations that were done by another uh, student, Harald uh, Schmidt. Okay, so emboldened uh, by, by this nice uh, agreement, uh, one can then uh, try to, um, uh, build a model for the entire YSR chain. So uh, um, we introduce one of these single side superconductors coupled for every uh, impurity spin and, uh, um, and the impurity spins can be coupled by uh, an RKKY interaction that is basically due to the uh, quasi particle continuum that we've been uh, ignoring uh, in the calculation. Um, and this uh, of course, on top of it now, the hybridization between neighboring YSR states basically means that uh, these um, uh, electrons in the single site superconductors can hop between uh, neighboring sites. And of course, then there is the exchange coupling uh, between the impurity spins and the uh, electrons. So this then is the full um, Hamiltonian uh, for this. Um, but uh, let's just move on right away and project it in some sense, project out all of the high energy states of this uh, problem, so which are not uh, very physical because we are ignoring the quasi-particle continuum. So we are basically taking the limit in which both the pairing and the exchange coupling go become very large, but we keep the YSR energy, the hybridization, um, and the RKKY interaction actually uh, fixed. And in that case, we basically are left with three low energy states for each one of these um, impurity spins. There's the local singlet, and there are the two uh, even fermion parity states with the BCS state uh, and uh, the free uh, spin states. Now these two uh, differ in fermion parity, so one can actually define uh, fermionic operators, treat the singlet as the ground state and introduce uh, fermionic operators that create uh, these um, uh, free spin, two free spin states. Uh, these fermionic operators are basically particle hole conjugates uh, of the uh, Bogolyubov quasi particle operators properly uh, projected. And uh, if you write the Hamiltonian in terms of these operators, then basically it becomes a TJ model uh, um, uh, that I already mentioned earlier. 
um, the YSR energy is basically acting as a chemical potential on these um, uh, for this TJ model. Uh, the impurity spin uh, the, the impurity spin is now associated with these D fermions. So these uh, are just the usual fermionic uh, spin operators expressed in terms of the D um, operators. And then uh, you can have tunneling uh, or hopping between neighboring uh, sites, and you can have pairing of neighboring sites. Um, so basically, um, the hopping in the original model uh, changes the parity, the fermion parity of each site. And so if you have, say, a, um, a even fermion parity a free spins um, state next to a uh, um, next to a singlet to a screen state, uh, then the hopping will just exchange the fermion parities of these two, and that just corresponds to hopping um, of the spin. So that gives you a hopping term for the Ds. Similarly, if you have two um, free spins, say, next to each other, then this hopping um, changes, goes, gives, gives, goes from two even fermion parity sites to two odd fermion parity sites. So you're basically screening both of the spins in this process, and that's uh, just a pairing uh, term. To understand this, you should always remember that these Cooper pair states, these are BCS states, they are empty and doubly occupied. So you can actually hop in and out of these doubly occupied uh, sites. Okay, so that, uh, that then is the uh, simple model uh, that we've been uh, investigating. And uh, we've done uh, just exact diagonalization studies for, uh, for chains uh, of the order of 10 uh, electrons. So let me then, discuss, uh, spend the remaining time on discussing uh, the corresponding uh, results. So um, this is the phase diagram as a function of the energy of the YSR state here is uh, zero. And uh, as a function of the strength of the RKKY interaction, ferromagnetic on the left, anti-ferromagnetic uh, on uh, the right. If the uh, uh, YSR um, and, and what's plotted, uh, the color scale is uh, the number of holes. Zero holes means that uh, we have uh, a spin at every single site, and 10 holes uh, means that all of the spins uh, are screened. So if the YSR energy is very large and uh, negative, um, then the chemical potential is very small, and uh, we basically don't have any spins in the system, and uh, do you have a, a system of uh, screen spins. So here is, this indicates the total spin of the system, which is in this case, uh, simply zero. If on the other hand, uh, you have a very large and positive um, uh, YSR energy, then there is a spin at every uh, site. And this basically forms a spin one half Heisenberg uh, chain. We took the RKKY interaction to be Heisenberg-like. And uh, so for fair, uh, and there's a ferromagnetic Heisenberg chain uh, and uh, um, anti-ferromagnetic um, Heisenberg chain uh, in this system. If we now uh, um, change uh, the YSR energy um, uh, through zero, uh, then we slowly uh, increase, uh, if we decrease it, then we slowly increase uh, the number um, of holes. So at zero exchange coupling, Actually, we are basically just filling that a band. So this is just the, the bandwidth due to the hopping between uh, neighboring sites. That's the region in which uh, the number of holes uh, changes from uh, zero to uh, it's to all to ten holes. Um, as we increase the exchange coupling, it turns out that this uh, this the range of um, energy uh, YSR energies for which uh, one has uh, all, all of the all of the spins remain um, grows and grows, and this is because as j as j increases in magnitude, uh, one gains uh, RKKY en energy, and one gets gains this RKKY energy only if there are uh, impurity spins in the problem. So this stabilizes uh, these um, impurity spins. That happens both for antiferromagnetic uh, coupling and for uh, ferromagnetic coupling. For antiferromagnetic coupling, you have lots of singlets, and then the pairing interaction, um, which is actually a spin singlet uh, pairing, is effective. And that's uh, why particle number or the number of holes is not a good quantum number. And there is a smooth crossover here um, uh, in the number uh, of holes. Um, as you go to large enough RKKY, um, this width reduces because it becomes basically equal to the pairing, which is a little bit weaker than the hopping for these particular parameters. 
Um, now on the on the ferromagnetic side, uh, you see that this transition region eventually um, this disappears completely, and uh, you go directly from the total uh, from from the spin chain into the totally uh, screened uh, site. This happens roughly when the RKKY interaction becomes comparable to the hopping uh, um, between neighboring sites. Um, and uh, um, but at weaker RKKY uh, interaction, it turns out that there's a metallic ferromagnetic phase uh, that is intervening. And that's sort of uh, that's a um, in which in this case there are a few holes uh, included uh, in in the chain, but the chain still uh, retains its uh, ferromagnetic uh, order. Um, this actually is the parent phase for the topological uh, superconductor. Um, here you can think of this phase as being basically a spin singlet uh, superconductor due to this delta tilde term, uh, the pairing term, and the uh, TJ model. Okay, so um, that's roughly uh, the phase diagram. So now let's uh, look at the excitation spectra. Um, so if we are first looking into the in the fully screened uh, situation, then um, tunneling an electron in uh, basically creates a single spin in a, a inert uh, background. This spin is mobile, so you basically expect this to be a single particle problem. Uh, and uh, you just expect to see uh, single particle states of a band. And in fact, that's what happens. Uh, the lowest energy state that is gapped uh, is just a single, has just a single um, uh, peak. Then you have this, the next state has a single node, then two nodes and so on. So these are just uh, kind of particle in a box uh, uh, states or uh, the lowest energy states of a band. Um, there is a, however, one effect of many body effect, and that is that uh, these states become weaker and weaker as you go to higher energies. And that is uh, because uh, we do have pairing. And so uh, the, the number of spins is actually not a good quantum number. Uh, and uh, as you go to higher um, energy, you mix in it, um, not only single spin states, but also three spin states and five spin states by by pairing, and that leads to a certain reduction uh, in the spectral weight and this uh, and reduction in, 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 in the contrast here. If, on the other hand, we are looking at the uh, ferromagnetic phase with all uh, spins there, uh, then um, again, we would, in lowest order, one would expect that this hole that we're introducing is basically um, forming, uh, it's just a single particle uh, uh, problem for, for a single particle uh, uh, um, band. And in fact, that's more or less what happens. There's again a nodeless uh, ground state, and then uh, they're very close to it. Actually, there is a one node state and two node state. The only difference um, from that uh, picture is that uh, the two boundary sites are special because if you flip the boundary site, you only break one uh, um, RKKY bond and not two as on every other site. So there is a uh, attractive potential to the boundary sites and that makes the, um, the boundary sites uh, light up uh, um, below the band center and uh, darker uh, above the band center. On the other hand, in the a ferromagnetic case, this uh, spin singlet pairing is basically uh, inconsequential uh, because there are no singlets, and that's, uh, that's why there is no reduction in the uh, intensity uh, as the energy uh, is increasing here. So there's basically a good, fermi uh, a good particle number uh, conservation um, because the, fermionic, uh, the, the ferromagnetic order uh, um, makes uh, frustrates the, the spin singlet uh, pairing. And you can see that here also on the ferromagnetic side, all of these uh, transitions are rather uh, sharp. OK, I should come to an end. Um, so here then is uh, the antiferromagnet. And the antiferromagnet, uh, it turns out uh, that there is a much more complicated spectrum. And that's because they are basically spinons and holons. Uh, and uh, the spectrum is generally uh, more uh, complicated. Um, if, on the other hand, you go into this, what I call the metallic ferromagnet, uh, then actually you see that the excitation spectrum uh, becomes gapless, and there are already several nodes because some of the states are already um, occupied. An important point here is that this uh, ferromagnetic metallic uh, metal phase is reduced 
uh, compared to the um, uh, in, in magnitude compared to the classical case, because on the one hand, it's reduced by the fact that uh, the RKKY interaction is stabilizing the spins. And on the other hand uh, side, it's being eaten at uh, by the pairing and the spin singlet uh, superconducting uh, phase. Okay, so then uh, let's get back to Majoranas and to topological superconductivity. Um, this system does, as it stands, does not yet uh, support topological superconductivity. And that's because there is a continuous symmetry, so the ground state is highly uh, degenerate on the ferromagnetic side. Um, and also, we have not yet included uh, spin orbit uh, coupling. However, if we break uh, this continuous symmetry, for example, by taking the RKKY interaction in the most extreme case to be purely Ising, and we introduce appropriate uh, spin orbit coupling, then uh, one does see topological superconductivity. So if you basically scan through this metallic phase here, uh, then you find that at one point uh, there is a topological phase transition uh, once you go uh, into this metallic phase, which is now gapped by, um, by P-wave uh, pairing enabled uh, by the spin orbit coupling. Um, we can also uh, describe this approximately, this is this dashed line. Um, it works uh, um, quite nicely here. We are missing this, uh, this small JZ, we are missing the, um, the sp spin singlet pairing uh, effects. And we can also uh, discuss the number of holes and the, and the spin orbit coupling by a simple um, trial uh, wave function. And finally, you can look at the uh, um, spectral function and you see that indeed there are Majorana lighting up at zero energy uh, in the spectrum. Okay, with uh, then of course, this is just the simplest spin one half case in real life. Uh, yeah, we have a few minutes for questions. Okay, yeah, I, I'm, I'm done basically. Uh, in the real life, you have transition metal uh, impurities. And uh, so the, the spin can vary from, uh, have, can have larger values. These are coupled to several channels. Uh, so they can be screened in several channels. So the effective spin can vary anywhere between zero and S. There can be single ion anisotropy. There's the lechinsky moria interaction, and you can think of this in higher dimensions. Uh, so this is really a rich platform for quantum magnetism and uh, its interplay with topological superconductivity. Okay, with that, I'm uh, done. I don't think I need to uh, read through these uh, conclusions again, and I simply thank you for your attention. All right, uh, let's thank, uh, thank Felix for that nice talk. Uh, if there are questions, you can uh, raise your hand or you can even, uh, so Adi has a question. Could you please go ahead and, and ask your question? Yeah, so, uh, okay. Felix. Oh. Adi? Uh, you've muted yourself as far as I can tell. Yeah, we have an echo problem. problem. Yeah. We have uh, way too many uh, devices. Okay, can I ask a question instead <laughs> while they're solving their problem? Yeah, go, uh, go ahead, Deloni. Uh -huh. Yeah, uh, actually, I said it also. So uh, I think that realistically impurities have a larger spin uh, than one half. And then what's important is the single line anisotropy, uh, which uh, usually makes things more classical. You, you, you impede spin flips. So this is a beautiful part of the work where you look at Heisenberg as one half. Right. Uh, maybe it's less of a danger. Right. So, so, but I, I, but so, I think the re reality is simply that you can have everything, and and there is a there's an entire range of possibilities. Um, so, actually, I, I showed briefly these uh, chains that uh, Katarina was uh, building, uh, and these are iron on iron diselenide. And what we at least the, the data seem to indicate uh, that first of all, it's a it's a spin two system. Yeah. Um, but actually, three of these it's coupled also to four channels. And uh, three of these channels are actually screened. So there are four YSR states. Three of them are beyond the quantum phase transition. So in effect, it's actually a spin one half uh, yeah. system. And uh, so, so 
um, you can have the, the, the point is that even if the bare spin is not one half but higher then uh, they can be screened uh, in the various channels and uh, the resulting or the effective spin uh, need not be uh, can, can be much smaller and can be spin one half and then it, it's a it, it really depends on on the relative magnitudes of the scales uh, what you get and it, in that case also if, if you if you excite one of the screen states uh, screen channels then you would go from spin one half and go to spin one uh, but whereas if you excite the the ysr state that is still unscreened um, then you would go from spin one half to spin zero so you, there's a lot of uh, in, in i think there in principle there are all kinds of possibilities and uh, it's a rich uh, system. And this is, of course, I agree th with you though, that previously what we did was kind of one limit in which uh, you have very strong uh, uh, large spins and very strong um, uh, um, single ion anisotropy uh, that is, um, I guess, easy access, uh, then that would probably be well described uh, by that theory. Whereas this is the opposite limit in which you have this, this the smallest spin in the most quantum case. And this is seen basically on a, a separate impurities, right? So you, it's a question about single impurity physics. Right. So actually, in that case, it turns out that uh, yeah. So you even from the single from the um, single spin to the uh, dimer, uh, you you still screen uh, or unscreen and. Uh, uh, certain channels. Um, it's basically the, exactly this physics that I was describing that uh, the RKKY interaction uh, favors uh, having the spins. Um, I see. So the, these things are actually happening there. And I think in principle, I mean, you know, there, there are quite a few impurities and there are many substrates. And uh, it's really a question of what each particular substrate is doing with these impurity spins, uh, which case uh, you're realizing. That's what I meant by versatile and uh, interesting platform for quantum magnitude. Thanks. Yeah, again, I'm sorry for eating up all the time. <laughs> so can I uh, try again? Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, so uh, uh, Felix, the, uh, are the two topological superconductors, the one that comes in with the spins being classical and the one that comes in with the, the spin being quantum, uh, are they different in any way? So if you if you come with an STM tip, will you see diff uh, different features in the zero bias peaks or anything like that? No, I mean in the end, uh, in the end, once you form a uh, uh, this ferromagnetic order, um, I think they are pretty much uh, the same. Then you have basically you should have. Uh, um, broken symmetry and uh, and you can in some sense and and you also it's Ising order so you 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 have a preferred uh, direction um, of course in in the simulations uh, the, the the overall model is still time reversal symmetric so you you have the states for all the spins up and you have the corresponding states for all the spins uh, mm -hmm. down but in an experiment they would be very far uh, away from each other as long as you're not at too high temperatures and not in too long. Uh, Chains. So in that sense, I think that the difference, no, at that, by that time, they're basically uh, very similar. The main difference is that in the quantum case, the region in which you have topological superconductivity, because you're taking care of all of these competing phases, uh, is much, much smaller uh, mm -hmm. than it, it seems to be in the classical model. All right, so let's thank uh, Felix again, and uh, let's move uh, then to our next speaker, and maybe we can have more uh, discussion and questions uh, in the discussion session.